In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm not going to talk about today's Gospel, uh, which was about St. Peter being called the fisher of men, and the miracle of catching the fish. I will make one comment that some of the Church Fathers see something very interesting that we wouldn't probably see today. When they caught so many fish at our Lord's command that the first boat was sinking, they called to a second boat. So the first boat was Simon Peter's. The second boat were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which means the sons of thunder. And they came in their boat, so that both boats were almost sinking. And one of the interesting things that some of the church fathers see in the first boat, the chosen people of Israel, and the second boat, the Gentiles, all coming for salvation. But what I really want to talk about is the father of St. John the Baptist, the high priest Zechariah, and his wife Elizabeth. What we're celebrating this evening and tomorrow is the conception of St. John the Baptist. And our Lord said of St. John the Baptist when he heard about his beheading by King Herod, he said, no man born of woman was greater than John the Baptist. So he's the greatest of all human beings, except, of course, the God-man Christ himself and his most pure mother. But he conceived John the Baptist by means of a miracle. Church tradition says it happened six months before the Annunciation because actually Elizabeth was a cousin of the Virgin Mary. And six months before the Virgin Mary herself had her Annunciation, this miracle happened. Zechariah was a Levi. He was of the tribe of Levi, the, the tribe of the Jews that was descended from Aaron, who was a priestly tribe. And his, his wife Elizabeth was also the lineage of Aaron, Moses' brother, the first priest of the Jewish people. And according to St. Luke, the evangelist, both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless, because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. When Zechariah was serving as high priest on the Day of Atonement, the holiest day in the Jewish calendar, he went to the temple in Jerusalem to burn incense <coughs> before the Holy of Holies. It was only done on this, on, on this day of the year. And shining with a brilliant light, the angel told him that his prayers and that of his wife Elizabeth had been heard. And in their old age, they were to give birth to a son, and he was to call that son John. The Gospel of Luke tells us that the angel announced that he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and will go before the Lord to prepare the people for him. But Zechariah lacked faith. And he doubted the words of the angel. He didn't see how it was possible. And for this, he was struck silent until the birth of the forerunner, John the Baptist. In order to teach him not to doubt the divine promises that surpass even the order of nature. On the day of the child's birth, Zechariah regained his speech after writing the name John on a tablet, Yuan, to indicate what the child's name would be. And he then intoned a prophetic canticle that's recorded in the Gospel of Luke. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he said to his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies, and to enable us to serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High God, 
for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. After the conception of Christ, Zechariah declared the ever virginity of the Virgin Mary. For although she was pregnant, he appointed her a place in that section of the temple that was reserved only for virgins. And this scandalized many of his brother priests who were horrified because Mary was clearly pregnant when she was at that temple. This is not in the Gospel of Luke, but these are in early Christian texts and it's part of the tradition of our church. And the church fathers accept this. Basil the Great attests this even in his homily for the Nativity of the Lord for Christmas. He says, It is also clear from the story about Zechariah that Mary was always a virgin. For there is an account, and it has been handed down to us from tradition, that Zechariah as high priest entrusted Mary to the place for the virgins in the temple even after she had conceived the Lord. And then he was slaughtered by his fellow Jewish priests between the temple and the altar. Charges had been brought against him, St. Basil says, by the people on the grounds that by his actions he established that incredible and famous sign that a virgin gave birth and her virginity was not destroyed. What really bothered them it was as if to proclaim the child of the Virgin Mary was the Messiah, because it was Isaiah's prophecies that said a virgin shall conceive. So by putting a pregnant Virgin Mary there with the other virgins, he was proclaiming that her child would be the Messiah. We all know from the Gospel of Matthew how King Herod issued a decree that all the children under the age of two were to be slaughtered after he heard that a new king of Israel would be born in Bethlehem. So all the male children under the age of two were to be slaughtered by it's the massacre of the innocents of this known church calendar. After he heard of the birth of Christ in Bethlehem from the wise men who called him the king of the Jews. But John the Baptist was only conceived six months before Christ, so he was under two also. And the same early Christian text tells that Zechariah hid John and his mother <laughs> in a cave beyond the Jordan, because he was very prominent being high priest in Jerusalem. He hid his wife and son in a cave. But while he remained in Jerusalem, his fellow Jewish priests took the opportunity to denounce Zechariah to Herod and he was slaughtered in the temple between the altar and the sanctuary. That's what that verse in Luke is all about. When I was a Protestant in my teenage years, I was very confused by some of these texts in Matthew and Luke. We know that also in tradition, his body was then taken up by certain priests and buried with his fathers with honors by the priests who, who supported him. But in Matthew 23, 35, toward the end of our Lord's ministry, when he's in the temple and he's castigating the leaders of the Jewish people for all their hypocrisy, for all the, everything they're doing, he said, you brood of vipers. You know, you, you put these impossible burdens on the people. You don't even keep them yourselves. And he goes on and on. It's a tirade that goes on for pages. And then it reaches its climax when he says, that on you, the Jewish leaders of this time, may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth from the blood of the righteous Abel, the brother of Cain, son of Adam, to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. 
I was trying to figure out my teenager, who is this Zechariah? He's beginning at the Genesis. He's starting with the, you know, uh, Cain and Abel. And he's going all the way up to the present. But the Zechariah, the minor prophet in the Bible, lived in the 6th century. And when you pick up a Protestant commentary, they'll try to somehow make a connection between what's in the Bible. But that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the father of John the Baptist, the high priest, whom everyone in his generation knew was slaughtered in the temple and martyred. St. Theophilact of Olkri, writing the 11th century, is a great, great Byzantine theologian and saint of our church. His volumes of scriptural commentary fill huge volumes, most of which have not been translated. But his commentaries on the Gospels have been translated, and some of the, of the epistles of St. Paul. And in his commentary on this verse, he's like a, to, to understand who he is, he's, he, he takes all the church fathers and kind of finds a consensus of all the fathers. And you have it in one place, what the ancient tradition of the church is. And he says... All blood, says Christ, from Abel to Zechariah, shall come upon you, the Jewish leaders. It was appropriate that he mentioned Abel, for as Abel was slain out of envy by his brother Cain, so Christ too was envied and put to death out of envy. And he says, which Zechariah is mentioned here? And he says, there are some who say, it is he who is numbered among the 12 prophets, the 11th of the 12 minor prophets who lived in the 6th century BC. But others, and most, say that he is the father of the forerunner, John the Baptist. For there is an ancient account handed down to us, according to which Zechariah, when he was high priest, had Mary, the mother of God, stand in the temple in the place of the virgins, even after she had become pregnant. And the Jews were vexed at this, and they killed him for raking among the virgins a woman who was clearly pregnant. But it is nothing to be wondered at if the father of the forerunner also had a father named Baruch. That's what Bar Barakaius is. It's the son of Baruch. Baruch was a very common name among the Jews, as was Zechariah. So just because he had the same name as the prophet and he, his father had the same name as that prophet's father didn't necessarily mean that's the one that was intended. For it is likely that just as they shared the same name, so did their fathers. The verses from the Synaxarium for the feast say it all. Zechariah was slaughtered like a lamb within the temple for the Lamb of God. He was slaughtered on the floor of the temple. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat>